This is a Marshall Enterprises presentation. Peace, everybody. I need to outline the basics of an LLC. I've had conversations with individuals that are looking to start companies to take control of the name, to hide or protect their assets, you know, asset protection. And the people aren't too clear on the different levels of protection, the degree in which the businesses have to run or have to be structured. There's a misconception that if it's a foreign entity that the United States can't touch it, can't mess with it, et cetera, et cetera, which is true to an extent. If it's set up correctly, set up properly, the corporate veil can't be pierced, the entity can't be pierced, or the trust structure can't be pierced. A lot of different levels there that have to be structured properly. But we're just dealing with the basics of the LLC. Now, when you form an LLC, or when you consider forming an LLC, you must consider what state you're going to form it within. Rule of thumb, you should always consider opening or forming that LLC in the state in which the business will take place. For asset protection purposes, meaning you're looking to protect property, then it does not have to, it does not have to be formed or registered in the state that the property is located. But there's a caveat to that. If you do not form or register that LLC in the location where the property is located, you could lose standing to sue. If the LLC is formed in New York, the property is located in New Jersey. New Jersey does not require that you have a registered agent. But if you don't have a physical location in New Jersey, and that individual that you are renting the property to, or the individual that got hurt on your property sues you, you don't have any standing in New Jersey. Your company is formed in New, in New York. So you might end up with the problem of the tenant not being forced to pay rent because you're don't, you don't have standing in New Jersey. So there's a lot of issues that you know you got to really think about. There are things that you can do to protect your LLC if you form it in another state. This is the basics. Let me, let me not get thrown off. This is just the basics. Let's just go to the basics. You need to form the LLC. Consider where you're going to form it at. If you're going to form it in the state in which the business is going to be operated, great. If you're looking to form an LLC because you're looking to protect property, it is wise to also form that LLC where the property is going to be located. You must consider if it's going to be a single member LLC or if it's going to be a multi-member LLC. Difference being a single member LLC is more like a sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship, similar to a DBA, you're doing business as you. There's not much protections there as a single member LLC. You may want to add members and partners for tax benefits 
and for limited liability, limited liability protections. Okay, so consider it's going to be a single member or it's going to be a multi member. You might want to um, pick an agent, although New Jersey does not require that you have an agent. That's still, or well, that's a, a line of defense. Select a registered agent. Use a registered agent. Whether you're going to use a private or a a a business to represent you, or you're going to name your daughter, your cousin, your uncle, someone, a physical person that lives in that jurisdiction of the, where the property is located or where the business is um, located. Uh, you need to have an operating agreement. You need to have an operating agreement. An operating agreement is similar to the articles of, um, not the articles, the, um, the bylaws for a corporation. A corporation needs bylaws, an LLC needs an operating agreement. A trust needs an indenture. It's the rules in which the LLC is going to be run. Uh, LLCs must do an annual report and there may be annual fees attached to it. So in a previous video, I spoke about the easy peasy way of starting a business and using a DBA because there's no annual fees associated with that. There's a lot less restrictions, a lot more liability. However, it's an easy system. It's an easy type of business structure to run. When an LLC, you have to pay an annual fee depending on the, the state that you are um, registered in. And along with the annual fee, you have to file the annual report. Now, if you have a multi-member LLC, you may have to pay a fee per member per year. So for instance, in New Jersey, the annual fee is $75. The annual members fee is $125. So however many members you have for that LLC would have to pay $125 per person, per member, and that one time $75 a month, or $75 a year annual fee. So it can be costly. Now there are ways around paying that fee per member, that will require a consultation. <laughs> there are ways around a lot of things. If you just do the research, do the research and you'll, you can figure some of these things out. And last part of this basic LLC structure, protections. An LLC will protect you and protect your company if the operating agreement is done correctly. You need to consider what is a charging order? There's other facets, but I wanted to bring up the charging order because I'm going to make a separate video on that one. But the charging order basically is protecting you from attacks outside. Charging order. It needs to be outlined properly in your operating agreement. All right, so if you don't have an operating agreement, do you have an LLC? If you don't pay your annual fee, will your LLC be in good standing? If you have a single member LLC, will you be protected if something happens to your property, something happens to you? If you have a multi-member LLC, same question. Will you be protected if something happens to your property or something happens to you or something happens to the business? A lot of things to consider, but LLC basics, what you need and how, what things you should think about when you are considering using an LLC, okay? There's other thing now, when I say LLC, LLP and foreign LLC, foreign LLP comes into play as well. So I'm using LLC because that's the operative word and it's a familiar term, limited liability company. That limited liability can be domestic or could be foreign. That limited liability 
company can also be a partnership and it can be a foreign limited liability partnership or it can be a domestic limited liability partnership all right so you need to consider these things when you're forming these things and get the whole picture don't just run out there and get an llc and then fill in all the blanks many people have done that and it's not worth the papers written on last but not least you need to have a bank account if your LLC, or if you create an LLC and you don't have certain components of the LLC in place, and let's say you get sued, the judge is going to try to find out, or the judge is gonna ask you to prove to the court that it is a viable LLC, that it is not a, um, what do you call that? Alter ego, it's not, actually a dba you know it's you doing business as when you do it when you when you create an llc you are separating your business from you otherwise you'd have a dba otherwise you would do a sole proprietor so when you do an llc the whole idea is to put a wall an entity in front of you you're doing business and you're operating your business either going to be a single member or you're going to have um partners and the partners actually you know do what they need to do to make this llc work but if you are lacking certain components it can be construed as a sham or as a alter ego finances have to be separated meaning you can't commingle the funds of the llc you can't commingle the funds of a, a regular bank a regular uh, company as well but we're talking about the basics of llc so you have to have all of the components that I previously mentioned, and you must have a bank account. The address of the business is also critical too, or crucial. These are things that you must consider. And if you have difficulty understanding the process, if you have difficulty organizing your LLC, give me a call, reach out to me, and I can help put some pieces together that you may be missing, or show you the complete puzzle and how it's supposed to lay out all right these are the basics of an llc and these are important things that need to be laid out otherwise you're wasting your money you're wasting your time you're wasting your energy and you may think that your assets are protected you may think that you have a viable company but you really don't and again how can you prove that you have a viable business Adding to the basis, I'm sorry, you should have meetings or you're going to have to have meetings. According to your operating agreement, it lays out what the business has to do, should do, should be doing. So there's many things that come with having an LLC. So don't just form one and say, okay, I'm good. What are you doing with it? because you're going to be held responsible for it, even when you apply for that EIN. Once you apply for that EIN, if it's, if it is structured in such a way that you are required to pay taxes, the date that you form it is when the clock starts ticking. All right? So, you have an LLC and you're paying a monthly, or I'm sorry, an annual fee, you're paying for the members, you're paying taxes, but you're not making any money, you're not producing anything. Was it worth it? Things to consider. Good question, we'll talk about that another time too. This is Bud Browns, we'll talk about the basics of an LLC. Thank you.